In this problem, we're going to do a hypothesis test about a uh, population mean where sigma or the population standard deviation is unknown. So I'm going to go ahead and write on the top of my paper here mu to remind myself that I'm testing a claim about a population mean. And it's really important for us to note that um, sigma is unknown. So anytime that sigma is unknown, this means that we're going to use the t distribution instead of the normal distribution. Okay, so let's go ahead and read the problem and start writing down all the relevant information. So when 40 people use Weight Watchers, so this is our sample, so our sample size is 40, uh, their mean weight loss was three pounds. So our sample mean is three pounds, which represents the weight loss. Okay, and there is a standard deviation of 4.9 pounds. So our sample standard deviation is 4.9 pounds. Okay. We're going to use a significance level of 0 0.01, so that's alpha. And we're going to test the claim that the mean weight loss is greater than zero. So I'm going to rewrite the original claim down, but I'm going to write it using symbols. So the original claim, and I'll highlight it here, the original claim is that the mean weight loss is greater than zero. Okay. So we're saying that mu is greater than zero. So notice that the original claim does not contain equality. So that is not going to be our null hypothesis. So let me go ahead and write down the first step here. We want to know what is our null hypothesis and our alternative hypothesis. Okay, so that's not gonna be the null hypothesis. So what we do is we ask ourselves, what if this statement was false? So if this is false, then what are our other options for mu? Then we would say that mu could be less than zero or it could be equal to zero. So you can break this out into two mutually exclusive statements, mu less than zero or mu equal to zero. And then we take the statement that has equality in it and that becomes our null hypothesis, mu equals zero. Therefore, um, the alternative hypothesis is, the, is going to be the original claim. So the original claim becomes our null hypothesis. Okay, let's start doing the hypothesis test. So to do that, we need a test statistic. Keep in mind that a test statistic is a z-score for your sample statistic. So here, our sample statistic is our sample mean, which is x bar. So we wanna come up with a z-score for three pounds. And after we do that, we're gonna calculate a p-value and the p-value is the area that corresponds with our test statistic. So the p-value tells us the probability of getting a test statistic that is at least as extreme as the one that we got. So let me draw a diagram here to show you what this is going to look like graphically. Okay, so um, even though this looks like a normal distribution, it's not, this is the t-distribution. The tails are a little bit thicker than the normal distribution. Um, but the center here is works the same way as the normal distribution. And because um, the original claim and the alternative hypothesis is that mu is greater than zero, we know that we have a right tail test. So the shaded region here, this represents the critical region. And so what we want to do is we want to find the critical value. So we want to find the critical value, which is z sub alpha. Um, that separates that critical region from the rest of the distribution. So you can use inverse t on your calculator. And then it's going to ask you to put in the degrees of freedom, which for this problem, that's 40 minus 1, which is 39. So that gives us a critical value of 3.3. Now let's go to the calculator and go ahead and perform um, a t-test. So we're going to use the t-test on our calculator to get our test statistic and p-value. Um, I'll show you how to do that at the end of this video. But when you do the t-test on your calculator, it's going to give you a test statistic of 3.87, so a t-score of 3.87, and a corresponding p-value of, well, let me write this so you can see what the calculator actually gives you. It gives you 2.0026E 
to the negative 4. So keep in mind that that's a scientific notation for 2.00. To 6 times 10 to the negative 4, which is equivalent to 0 0.00020026. 0 .00 so hopefully you can see that the p-value is a very small number. And let's sketch this on our graph here so you can see what all of this means. Um, so our test statistic, 3.87, I will use green for that. The test statistic is um, the t-score for our sample statistic of three. So here we have a um, test statistic of 3.87. So it's higher than our critical value of 3.31. So I'll just kind of mark it right here. So that right there is 3.87, which is our test statistic. So notice that your test statistic, it falls in the critical region. So if you're using the critical value method, we would reject the null hypothesis. So uh, we can say since our test st statistic falls in critical region, we are going to reject the null hypothesis, okay? Now, if you're using the p-value, then let me use yellow here to show you what the p-value is. The p-value is a probability, and it's the area to the right of your test statistic. So the p-value is the probability of getting a value that is at least as extreme as the one that we got, and the one that we got is that x bar is 3 with a corresponding t-score of 3.87. So hopefully you can see here that the p-value is less than alpha because 0 0.0002 is less than 0 0.01. Uh, we come up with the same conclusion as the critical value method. We're also going to, so we'll say since the p-value is less than alpha, we're going to also um, reject the null hypothesis. Okay, all right, so our last step to hypothesis testing is to make sure that we write out um, the conclusion in a complete sentence. So here, since we are uh, rejecting the null hypothesis and the original claim is our alternative hypothesis, we would say that there is sufficient, so let me see, I'm gonna need a little bit more space here. Let me move this up just a little bit, okay just so I have a little bit more room to write. So we would say there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that the mean weight loss is greater than zero pounds, okay? And we can see from our sample that we ended up with three pounds, which is statistically significant. I'm gonna uh, slide over to the next slide here to show you how to do the t-test on your calculator. So on your calculator, um, to get to the t-test, you wanna press stat and then tab over to test and then choose option number two for t-test. And then you want to put in all the relevant information. Make sure you choose stats here because we have statistics. We don't have actual data values. And then you're going to type in your um, mu naught, x bar, um, sample standard deviation, your sample size. And then down here, you put in your alternative hypothesis. And again, I know you can't see this because it's highlighted, but press calculate. And then it gives you the results for the t-test down here. So um, this t-value here is your test statistic. Okay, and this number here, that's your p-value. I'm going to link below um, in the description more videos to other hypothesis tests. Um, so uh, there are a couple of videos on how to do hypothesis tests about a uh, population mean where sigma is known, and then also a couple on um, testing a claim about a population proportion. So keep an eye out for those.